One of the first things you want to do is determine any clock skew between the computer you're investigating and the current time. Something as simple as an incorrect time zone may substantially impact your investigation or cause you to or bring you to incorrect conclusions. To get the time and date, you can use the date command and the time command and benchmark those against your current uh, time. Once you've established this, the next thing you will probably want to do is determine if anyone is currently connected to your system. And you want to take a look at the open ports, which can be given through Netstat. And Netstat, I can quickly see uh, where I'm currently connected to and what ports are open. So I can see here that there are a couple, but they're all local ports. Um, so there's really nothing that I'm concerned about here. Um, the next thing we want to look at is probably a list of processes. And there's a utility out there called PS List that you can use from Sys Internals that will give you your process list, the process ID numbers, the threads, um, how long it's been running for, and all of that information, as well as the ever important process ID number. Now, as you collect forensic inf information, you really should be appending all of this information to a log file. To do this, you would simply type in the command. So if we want netstat, and we can output redirect to netstat.log. And perhaps we should put this into a data directory just to keep all of our evidence uh, separate. And now our PS list. Okay. So now that we have taken a look at the running processes and the open network connections, we may determine that uh, there's something here that we're concerned with, uh, or maybe not. And if there's really nothing that's of concern there, the next thing we might want to look at is our services. So for the sake of showing you all this information, I won't be redirecting everything to a log file. I'll just be printing it on the screen. Uh, if we look at our services here using the PS service command, um, we can see what the services are running, what their current state is, um, and get a, a feel for what's actually running on the system. So what we're carefully looking at is any services that are currently flagged as running and determining if these services are legitimate services or not. So there's quite a few services that run in Windows. Uh, that's typical. Um, so as we go through these various services, we're just looking for anything that looks out of the ordinary. And if you're unsure about any of these services, uh, just jumping onto Google will quickly give you an idea as to what these services do. And it's actually a great way to learn about what the systems, what a Windows system does and how it runs and operates. So there's nothing as of yet that kind of catches my eye. They all seem to be typical Windows services. So there's nothing there that I'm typically concerned about. So the next thing we would want to look at is for any scheduled tasks. So we can use the AT scheduler, and in this case there's no task scheduled. This is important because sometimes uh, if you're trying to hide information, you may schedule a task to delete a bunch of files, and that might be something that, or trigger some event uh, that may be of interest to an investigator. Next thing we want to do is see if there's any um, open remote files. And this is showing any network shares that are currently open. Um, in this case, we can see that there is a couple. There's the PS tools directory, specifically the PS files directory. Um, and this is just showing me that there are three files open. Uh, in this case, they're actually mine because I'm not really using a USB stick in my virtual machine. I've simply mapped a G drive. And this is kind of the evidence showing that there are these three files that are currently open on the network share that I've created. Um, 
So in the real world, this is a big no-no, but for the sake of uh, illustration, uh, you're kind of seeing how I've set this up. So if there's nothing interesting there, you can move on and maybe you want to take a memory dump of one of the processes that you identified earlier on from your PS list. Uh, and I'll just bring that back up again. So I'll bring up a process list. And maybe we're a little suspicious of this iTunes helper, which is process number 1940. Uh, what we can do is we can run a user dump. And we'll say here 1940. And we will specify a file to store our dump. And what this will do is take the memory contents of that process and put it into a single file. Uh, this will let us kind of look at the raw machine code that's being executed on the computer at this particular point in time. And there's a number of interesting things you can find in there. Um, so now because it will be uh, a lot of binary machine code, it's not exactly human readable. So one of the first things we're going to do um, is we actually Microsoft releases has released a dump check program, and dump check will go through your dump file and give you all sorts of useful information. Ah, it's actually DUMP check. And we will run it on the file that we created. And in this case, if we look up near the top, let me run it again. Um, what's handy here is we can very quickly see what other files this process is currently accessing. So if you have a nasty virus or a trojan and you know the executable that it's pointing towards, this will so often identify some of the different DLLs that are being used in other referencing files. Um, so in this case you can see the iTunes helper is actually using a lot of different uh, library files. Uh, the rest of this stuff is essentially uh, all machine code and uh, I mean, that's really more for the, uh, the reverse engineers uh, if we need to send that out. Um, another kind of handy trick is if you just want to see what ASCII strings exist um, inside your dump file, inside your memory, uh, this will basically uh, pull off, again, you see all of the different uh, library files that are being referenced. Um, as well as anything that is an ASCII string that um, the iTunes Helper application has in its memory space at this particular moment, moment in time, um, which can often be used with some applications to extract passwords and things like that. So we can see different registry keys um, and all sorts of interesting information. 